my name is Joy Curtis. I'm at Eluma Online Therapy, and I work with the partnerships and the community department. My goal is to get quality resources to clinicians so that inevitably we can have better services and students can be catalyzed into, into more effective products, like just the process. Um, I have just enjoyed connecting with Story Jumper so much. I don't know how many of you, uh, like I just have, first off, it's easy to access and everything, but I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to get to know to John Yen, but throughout this entire process, I have loved how many questions he's asked. I love how collaborative he is. And I, I'm really excited about this webinar that Uluma and Story Jumper are hosting together because this is some very, very rich content. Without any hesitation, I would like to introduce you guys to Erin Nilsson. Erin Nilsson is a speech pathologist. She has over a decade of experience and a specific passion for early childhood intervention. She will be featuring how to utilize Story Jumper in online therapy sessions and model strategies to turn pencil and paper stories into virtual stories. I've already been excited to introduce John Yen. He is a CEO and co-founder of Story Jumpers with a master's degree from Stanford University and a bachelor's degree from the University of California at Berkeley. I got to introduce myself a little. My name is Joy Curtis. I have a master's in education and taught kindergarten on the Navajo Nation Reservation and Title I schools in Central Utah. I joined Iluma Online Therapy to support my passion to make quality education accessible to all. I am excited to have this audience filling up. Go ahead and kind of introduce yourself in the audience. If we were in a face-to-face -face session, you'd probably casually tell your neighbor a little bit about yourself. So tell us a little bit about yourself too, as I introduce Iluma and Story Jumper. So Iluma Online Therapy is a software solution for K-12 school special education services namely school psychology, speech therapy, counseling, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. We have over 10 years of experience and have provided hundreds and thousands of hours of remote therapy in schools and districts across the country. I first heard about Story Jumper from an online clinician who was using it in their remote therapy services. When I connected with Story Jumper, John Yen and I brainstormed how to share these online resources with others, how to use resources and therapy, that question brought us to Erin Nelson, who joined our collaboration. Like I said, I connected with Story Jumper, the number one rated site for credential creating and reading storybooks. Because I'd been recommended it to by an online clinician, I was impressed with how easy it was to make and share stories and the accessibility of books in the International Story Jumper Library. We collaborated on this showcase to feature some of the many ways. Stories can be used to inspire change. Story Jumper is designed to be shared. So there are many ways to use Story Jumpers. Write a book as a family about your summer vacation, two general ed classes setting up as pen pals. Throughout this presentation, Erin I and I will be focusing on utilizing Story Jumper in online therapy and in education because that's our backgrounds and our experience. I invite you to maximize your background and your experience. And in the chat, make sure that you add lots of ways that you can utilize Story Jumper and stories to inspire change. Without further ado, the first question that I'm going to put in the chat is to tell us why stories, uh, why create stories, why create stories in school? So Erin, why create stories? Okay. Um, hi guys, I am so happy to be here with you today. Um, I have found since starting my career in speech pathology that literature and stories are just a, an imperative part of what we do and I use them way more often than I ever thought I would when I was in grad school. Um, but stories are used in school for a number of reasons and a variety of purposes. Um, throughout the school year, educators turn to books and stories to teach lessons to children of all ages and ability levels. Um, toddlers in preschools use, um, are exposed to stories 
for teaching of play skills, vocabulary, rhymes, um, teaching simple sentence structure. Some of my favorite books that come to mind are like Little Blue Truck, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, um, and Fox and Socks. And then of course, as children grow, so does the complexity and the content in the stories that are read to them and eventually that they begin to read themselves. My, um, my daughter is a kindergartner. She's, her, tomorrow is her last day and watching her blossom through stories this year has just been absolutely amazing. Um, but some of my favorites in this category include like the Biscuit books, the cute series about puppies. If you haven't heard of them, definitely check them out. Um, Amelia Bedelia and Ramona. And then eventually those same stories are used to gauge student learning assess comprehension, model storyline and structure, all skills that are related to academic knowledge and application. Books, of course, are used for creativity and fun too. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Um, Joy, using books for empathy. I love that. Um, books are used for creativity and fun. Um, if you haven't read the book with no pictures or do not take your dragon to dinner um, or any of those stories, please do. They will make your students laugh. Um, they are really funny. Um, I enjoy using books to teach about various cultures and traditions to inspire, inspire students to be creative. Um, so one example of that is after reading Goldie Luck and the Three Pandas. Um, students could try to make turnip cakes or decorate red envelopes and deliver a note to a, um, one of their friends. But today we are going to be focusing on stories that are used for personal growth. We'll be talking about improving social behavior, self-healing and inspiration through stories. Okay, so um, as a speech pathologist and um, a lot of special educators and related service providers are also um, accustomed to social stories as well, but one of um, our evidence-based practices that we use is social stories. And um, as I was kind of getting prepared um, to do this webinar, I reached out to some of my special education um, colleagues and friends to get some input on how they have used social stories and then, of course, the outcomes. Um, social stories, of course, use photos or avatars um, that allow the characters to look similar to the student, um, and they are used to minimize inappropriate social behaviors and to teach other more appropriate social behaviors. Um, they are considered effective evidence-based evidence practice. Um, there are several articles on the ASHA wire um, that do reviews of social stories and their outcomes. Um, and then this is just an example of a paper copy of a social story that was written to improve safe and appropriate behavior on a bus. Um, it was created by the student's special education teacher a copy of the book was provided to the family to read before the student got on the bus in the morning. And then um, the school team also had a copy of the book that they read to the student before the, um, the student got on the bus in the afternoon. And the outcome of this social story was that the student improved the amount of time that he sat in his seat to 50% of the time from a baseline of less than 10% of the time. Um, and so of course that it was really great to see improvement. Unfortunately, the student did end up having to use, um, get on a different kind of school bus that allowed seatbelts, but he did improve that behavior. And even on this bus where he had the seatbelt, he stayed in his seat more often. Um, we are also going to chat about how we can create social stories in a digital format. And John, I'm not sure if you mind clicking through for me. It's not working when I click or it's delayed maybe. Um, so um, for a digital copy um, of or a digital presentation of a social story, um, 
Again, it's kind of the same idea. The teacher or service provider writes a story that models appropriate behavior. Um, they can collaborate with other professionals and work on the book simultaneously um, if using Story Jumper. And this was um, something, something that I came across when I had a student who was struggling with keeping his clothes on at school. So he was a kindergartner. He had never been in school before. Um, with COVID, he was at home for most of the school year and just started back um, right after spring break. And he did not understand private parts and keeping your body covered for safety. So he came out of the bathroom one day with his pants down um, around his ankles and he was not responding to verbal cues to pull his pants back up. He didn't understand that it wasn't safe, that it could be potentially embarrassing. Um, so really quickly, I messaged my colleagues. Oh my gosh, does anybody have a book about keeping clothes on at school? I did a Google search. I'm not sure if I would recommend that about keeping clothes on. Um, the Google search was a little, <laughs> a little bit iffy. Um, anyway, all that I could get were a lot of negative things, right? You have to keep your clothes on so that you don't get in trouble. You keep your clothes on or somebody is going to call the police. And that is definitely not the message that I wanted to send to a kindergartner. Um, I am a teletherapy SLP and providing paper copies of social stories is doable, but it's definitely not convenient. Um, making the story, emailing it to the school, waiting for the facilitator to print it out, staple it and distribute it, and then just hoping for follow through. Um, or I could do all of those things myself, mail it, and then there's like a one to two week delay because of the postal system. And again, just hoping for follow through. So in my Google search, one of the things that wasn't so iffy was Story Jumper. I found this amazing website that allowed me to create my own social story. Um, and I have learned so much about it even since this story that I made, um, but it allowed for the parents, the teachers, and the child to read the story. Um, now it's just read periodically for reinforcement. Um, it allows for independence because I was able to record my voice into the book. Um, we were able to discuss the story and use it as a teaching tool. The um, special educators used it during their social emotional um, class time. And so it has been really awesome. Um, if you make a story like this and you include student names or a student picture, which you are able to do, you can just keep it set as like private or family viewing. I think that's what it's called, John, right? The family view. Um, all, all the books are private by default. And right. if you choose to share, then you can share it uh, privately with certain people. Right, so if you keep it private um, and you, you can send like a link to the family and the teacher, then you can use it also as a data tracking tool because you can see how many times it is viewed by the student and then how effective um, it is to their behavior. So we're gonna go ahead and take a peek at this story um, just so you can get an idea of what you can make on Story Jumper. This took me roughly about 30 minutes to create. So we can just go ahead and um, open up the book. And then if you want to click on play, we can listen to it. When I get ready for school in the morning, I get dressed. This means I put on underwear, pants, socks, and a shirt. Once I am dressed, I keep my clothes on. That is how I keep my body safe and keep my private areas to myself. School rule, I must keep my clothes on at school. If I have to go to the bathroom, it is okay for me to pull down my pants and underwear when I am in the bathroom and the door is shut. When I am finished going to the bathroom, I will pull up my underwear and my pants. After that, I will wash my hands. It is important to make sure my underwear and pants are pulled up before I leave the bathroom. 
Erin, did you want to go through the entire book? No, I think that's, I think that's plenty. Um, so that's just kind of an idea of how um, you can use the story. So because I recorded my voice, the student is able to go through independently um, and read it himself. Um, and it also allows for a little bit of familiarity too, because he is used to my, um, used to my voice. So um, we would love if you um, would continue sharing ways that you would use Story Jumper, um, or if you could share ways that you might use Story Jumper with your students. If you and if you see an idea that someone else shares that you like or find interesting, please comment back. We would love to see a lively and interactive chat today. Okay, so the next way that we are going to um, chat about stories is through self-healing. Um, so stories that are used for self-healing can use photos or drawings of the situation. So how do you feel when this happens? And then how do you want to feel when that happens? Um, copies can be provided to the family and school personnel. Um, and students can take photos, draw pictures, or provide written or verbal feedback or input, I'm sorry. And then um, a student can also be part of the creation process. So as they develop new skills, new skills, they also go through a healing process. Um, so I also have an example of this. One of my colleagues, uh, my former colleagues, I should say, she um, works with the Head Start program in Maryland. And when she was um, the disabilities coordinator for her site. She was working with a student who had trouble transitioning away from her mom in the morning and throughout the day. And um, Shannon and her student worked together to make a paper copy self-healing book about drop off, saying goodbye to mom, and all of the fun things that the student did at school. Um, Shannon took pictures of the child, the child and her mom. And then she also had the student take some of the pictures too. Um, she then had the student tell her things she did at school and wrote them down. So her exact quotes were in the book. Um, and both the parent and the school had a paper copy of the book. And Shannon was really able to see growth because she, um, the student was a big part of making the book. So it's um, almost like a social story on steroids, right? Because the student is part of making the story. So they go through a self-healing process in that instead of just listening to um, what someone else created about a behavior that they would like to see in the child. Um, and we are also going to chat today about self-healing um, stories that are made on Story Jumper. So um, this story is very moving. Um, John shared this with Joy and I. This is a story um, that a um, team co-wrote with a student who was nonverbal. Um, and I also learned this term from John, um, bibliotherapy. So using the book um, as a form of therapy or self-healing. Um, it was a way that um, you know, the student published the book and made it public. So because the student did that, um, others are able to read books about people like them or about someone else with autism. Um, one really cool thing about Story Jumper, and John is going to go through and show us lots of cool things about it, but one cool thing about it is that you can um, create like a, a book template and then replace pictures um, to make it so that it can be used for multiple students. Um, and the same tool can be used in person or virtually with a variety of professionals and family members. So most school online therapists work with on-site therapists as a part of the multidisciplinary team. For example, the student might work with a school counselor face-to-face, -face, um, but a remote speech pathologist or vice versa. And so um, in this student, in this image, the student is accessing the story in a face-to-face -face therapy session using an iPad, but the same student can access the story in an online therapy session. Um, and this digital story was actually created during an in-person session by a student 
with autism and his team. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this story, John. Yeah, so this story was actually made public by the student and, and, and their parents. So they actually chose to add this to our public library, which includes millions of books. You can see that they've chosen to upload uh, photos of themselves, as well as the text that they entered. And they've also added some illustrations from our Story Jumper library. And we'll include a link to this book at the very end as well. Right. So powerful um, to see that. And I will say that as an SLP, I don't think I have ever seen um, quite such a profound um, story of self-healing that was created by a student and his team that can be accessed by so many other people. Um, I think that's the part that I, I really appreciate and love the most. Um, all right, so if you could share with us how you can see yourself using self-healing stories with your students, please let us know in the chat. We would love to hear from you. Okay, so we can go ahead and go on to um, the last area of personal growth that we are going to chat about today, which is inspiration. And there are so many books out there that are used for inspiration um, and motivation. Rainbow Fish inspires children to share. And as a result, they'll feel happy or even delighted as the fish feels in the book for doing so. Um, an awesome book of thanks inspires conversation about gratitude. Um, and then one of the most popular stories on our inspirational books on Story Jumper is Emily's Dream of College. Um, one of the coolest thing about Story Jumper is the ability to edit scenes and characters to make them more relatable. Let's take a peek at this book and then um, we're going to have Joy jump in and share us a little bit about how she might modify this story to fit her students. I'm super excited about this story in all honesty. So I, I taught kindergarten on the Navajo reservation. And if I had this book, I would change the background. I would use images from the local area so that my students could relate to it and really project themselves into the story. The local gas station, for example, trailer homes with tires on the roof, ship rock and the Rocky Mountains. One of my things is that if we want to inspire students with stories, we need to let them know that we chose this book because it reminds us of them. And not just them in a general sense, but them as an individual. And what I find empowering about utilizing technology and therapy and utilizing great content and resources such as Story Jumper in your sessions and in education is that you can truly, with ease and access, modify so that your students know that you're talking about them and them as an individual. And so with this story, I probably just switch up the background. So I included some things that students in my, in, in my area were very familiar with. Awesome, John, do you wanna share a little bit about this story? Yeah, so this was a story that was created um, and it's, it's basically uses the, the metaphor of a chick to represent a child and just talks about how this, how this baby chick has aspirations to, to go to college and just kind of goes through the, the entire journey of, of, of aspiring to go to college and then sort of figuring out how they might actually go about doing that. And so in the end, it ends up being an inspirational story for kids who are quite young, perhaps even first grade, who where you can sort of see that, that thought and that idea of one day you could go to college. So this has been Love it. Popular. This has been a very, very popular gift that's been given to a lot of young kids. Definitely inspiring. Thanks, John. And thanks, Joy, for sharing um, your perspective on how, you know, a story like this could be changed to um, fit different students. All right. So before I go, um, I would like to give one more reminder to share with us in the chat window how you might use stories with your children or your students. And now John is going to share with us a little more detail about Story Jumpers in the ins and outs. 
So as you can see from a number of the examples that, that Aaron gave there, there are a lot of benefits to using technology for stories. It's uh, much easier and faster to create and share stories when they're developed online. And you can really customize the story to be uh, very specific to the student that you're working with. And then makes that story much more relatable. So therefore the kid can, uh, can connect with the story much more. And then you can also collaborate with others who are remote in building that story as well. And so we'll actually show an example um, here, in, here in a moment where Joy and I will actually do some collaborative writing. Uh, but if you can imagine that if you wanna build a story uh, perhaps with um, someone else on your team, um, with someone who is maybe the, the main teacher who works with the students, then you can all collaborate together, build a story or, or also build a story with the student as well. And then once you're done with the story, then you can then share it with other people as well. And as Aaron described, uh, because it's being shared with other members of the team, then it's easier to repeatedly read that story for reinforcement. Now, in general, what we find is that the, with students is that the book format is very natural and it's, very, it's much more engaging than just slides. And once you finish the book, it's been shared and it's been read, um, you also have the option to publish a physical book as well. And what we find is that when a student has that tactile sense, when they can actually hold on to that book and, and read through that book and hear their own narration, then they just feel more connected to the stories. It's almost as if that book is like a friend that they carry around with themselves um, as they go about their day. So when you're creating these books, um, you can choose you know, multiple creation modes. You can have visuals, you can have sound, and you can also have text as well. Um, if you're working with a student who is gonna be co-creating the book with you, then you can start simply by, for example, just creating a book which is only has visuals. Um, if you find that this student um, is, is uh, not very verbal. And if you're going to be creating a, a, a book which has lots of visuals, um, then you can choose from the props and scenes from the Story Jumper Art Library. You can design your own characters that look like you know, your student or their friends or their family. Or you can even upload their drawings or photos that, that you've taken perhaps around the school as well. So you've got a lot of different choices. And with some students who, again, who are not as verbal, that first book may just be a picture book where they express themselves through pictures. And then if they're able to express themselves a little bit, a little bit better, then they can also add sound as well to the book. So you have the option in Story Jumper to record your voice on every page. And then you can also add background music and sound effects from our art library as well, just to kind of jazz up your, your narration a little bit. And then if your students are, are able to do some typing and enter in some text, then they, can, then they can enter in any type of text in any language, and they can also collaboratively write um, with other people as well. So once you're done creating the book, with, which is either authored by you, co-authored with the student, or just authored by the student, um, all of these books are private by default. But what we find is that these books um, are often shared and also published. And when they're shared with other people, such as classroom teachers, with, uh, with parents and other members of, of the team, then that book can be used uh, uh, for repetition and for reinforcement. And a lot of the students um, and a lot of the teachers want to be able to publish a physical book as well. And when this happens, then the authors feel very proud of themselves because they actually have a physical keepsake. Um, and these books actually have a voice link built into the books themselves. So here's a book, for example, that's, that's, uh, that a 11 year old girl created. And this is a hardcover book. And if you turn to, to page one of the book, you'll see that there's a QR code and there's a link at the very bottom. And that actually links to her latest narration. So what that means is that years later, these students can take this book off their bookshelf, turn to page one of their book, 
and listen to their younger self narrating the book. So when these students publish their books and they also choose to make their books public with their parents' approval, then they can also be part of our published authors program. And this is an opportunity for them to, to upload a photo of themselves holding their books and they can also submit uh, a short bio of themselves. So here you can see there's a lots of kids who have published their own books and they're obviously very proud of themselves. And you can see that they're, they're, they, they, all of them have biographies of themselves as well. And then of course we have a lot of adult authors, a lot of teachers, adults, grandparents who have also published their own books and they also have the opportunity to submit their photos and their own bios as well. You can see there's lots of examples here. And then for folks who, who really wanna really market their book and really get their books out there, a lot of teachers wanna do this. Um, you can also submit your book to earn royalties. Uh, so we have a royalty program where when people, buy, if you choose to make your book public, uh, then when people buy your book, then you can earn royalties on that as well. And then if you just go to this page here, which is storagejumper.com slash royalty, you can then see all the royalty terms, some of the requirements, and then you can submit your, your book for review. So we've had young kids all the way up through grandparents who have submitted their books for royalties. And John, I'm seeing in the chat, there's a question too about audio. Can you upload an audio? It looks like Lauren, she works with some music students. And Lauren, if I'm not representing your question well, just correct me. But can you add an audio file onto Story Jumper, or does the student have to record themselves? Well, so that's, that's a good question. Um, so what you can do is um, you can you can play the audio file, and then we'll then actually capture that as you're recording as well. So sometimes uh, people want to have like their own personal music playing while they're narrating the book, for example. Um, what you can do in that case is you can play the audio while you're narrating, and that way you can capture both. All right, so now let's actually go through and let's actually do a live demo here. Um, what we wanted to do is actually show you um, how you would actually get started to using Story Jumper. And then we'll actually go into a book that, that Joy wrote. We'll actually kind of break it down and we'll actually show you exactly how she went about creating that book. So um, you, you can follow along, you know, and actually do this while, while we're actually doing the step by step. So if you go to storyjumper.com, then this is the home page. You can see the home page says this. You would just go to the upper right hand corner and click sign up. And then the easiest way to sign up if you have a Google account is just to click Google, um, sign up, sign in with Google, and then you can just quickly sign up that way. You can also log in with your Facebook ID. Um, in this case here, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sign up here um, by typing in. Uh, username and then a password and then I'm just going to fill out the form here real quick. Okay. Then you enter in your email address and then we'll ask you here, you want to check the box here that says that I'm a teacher and I want to use Story Jumper with my students in class. And then you'll type in the zip code that you're in. And then you'll type in the name of your school. And you click sign up. And then we'll take you through an onboarding process. Uh, step one is just to, to plan out your lesson. And then step two is when you'll create your first book. Um, so at this point, um, instead of going through the, the rest of the onboarding, we'll, we'll just move over and we'll go straight into the book that um, that Joy created. And I wanted to emphasize that this was actually a collaboration creation. And so um, I got to add a couple of things, of course, in, in John, he got to add a couple of things. And then I just love the book, No David. Um, I've used it with a lot of different students. So let's go ahead and dive right on into how um, to rewrite a familiar book with a student utilizing Story Jumper and 
in, in an education and online therapy session. So this is the book page here. And then uh, if you want to read through the book, you can just click through the book here and you can basically read what's already been written. And then if you want to edit the book, then you just go to the right-hand side here and you just click edit. So one of the things that I like about the story book, No David, is that the book, if you are not familiar with it, follows a little boy on a typical day and everything he does, he just gets yelled no. At the end of the book, the little boy David is reminded that even though he might break the rules, he is loved and cared for by those around him. Uh, I have worked with many students who have broken many rules and I think that it's really important when you as the clinician or you as the teacher need to remind these students that they are still loved. So one time I had a student who peed behind a bush at the schoolyard on recess. And um, so I would work with this student to emphasize. And of course, as you can imagine, as soon as he started using the restroom outside, all of the aides, everyone started yelling at him, no, 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 right? And so he was so, so embarrassed. He was so embarrassed. It was really actually hard to get him to to reach back to a functioning level in class right so i would appreciate talking through rewriting the book no david with the student so that he we could emphasize that look even david does silly things and and really we're just keeping rules to keep ourselves safe and clean not because you no know, everyone still cares about us obviously Oh, oh, sorry. Now I'm going to turn it up. And I was just going to do one more. But uh, rewriting the story, too, for like our current time context is a lot of students are still learning virtually and, and no David is set in a face-to-face -face class session. And so rewriting it so that it's, it's in a context that students can understand. Yeah, so let's kind of break down here how this, how this page here was created. So you see on the left-hand side that there are different types of content you can add to the book. There are different types of text boxes that have different looks. There's props, scenes, photos, and voice. And we'll go through each one and show how you add them to, to the book. So this here is, uh, is, is a speech bubble, which was just added by clicking on the speech bubble here. And then you just type in the text. And then there's another text box down here, which is the big text box. And once you have type in the text, um, you can style that text. Um, Currently, it's uh, the, san the standard sans serif font, but a lot of a lot of folks want to change it so it looks uh, a little bit more personal. So, for example, the flower um, font is very popular because it looks like someone just wrote this. So that's kind of like a handwriting font. So that's that's quite common uh, for kids who really like uh, gaming. Um, they may want to use something like um, there's, a, there's a font here. That's pretty cool. Um, it's, a, it's a digital font, it's called Game. And then you can see it looks a little bit like Minecraft because it's got that kind of digital look to that as well. So the other thing that Joy added here, she added a, a prop. So that's, the, you see this, this is a, a prop here. And the way that she created that was she went over here to the left-hand side and she clicked on props and then she searched for props, typed in Bush and there's some, here's a few choices and maybe you want to, you want to change out the bush to something else. So let's choose this bush instead. Okay, let's go back to here. And you see that when I clicked on that, that it added the bush here. And so maybe while well, I'll remove this bush and I'll click on this prop here and then I'll just drag it over there. And now we have a different bush in front of David. Now, it's certainly possible you may want to use this book for more than one person. So, you know, let's say we were to customize this for a different student. You know, maybe it's a girl named Sally. Well, if we want to re reuse this book, then this is a character that Joy created, but I can also go in and design char a different character. So on the left-hand side under props, you see this button here that says design characters. If you click on that, then here's your character designer. And what I can do here is I can choose the skin tone of, of this character. So let's say we use skin tone, which is a little bit more tan. And then I'm gonna change the hairstyle here to be a little bit darker. You know, maybe she has short hair. 
And then here you can change the eyes, the eyebrows, glasses. Um, maybe I'll change her top here. Um, so it's summertime, so maybe I'll change it to this top here. Um, it's going to be a little bit warmer. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll have a skirt. And you can change the color of her skirt if you want. Um, if, uh, you know, later on, you know, when the weather gets colder, you can put a, you put a jacket on her or a hoodie on her. But it's uh, almost summertime, so we'll leave that off. And then maybe we change the shoes. You have different types of shoes you can put on this character. Put on some flats, but uh, let's put on some sandals on her. Okay. So after you've built your character, you just click finished. And the character here shows up on the left hand side. And you're going to click on that character to then add her to the page. And I'm going to swap him out with this girl named Sally. And then Joy, do you want to go in and maybe change? Um, so Joy is actually in the book as well. So um, so do you want to go in and maybe change the name David to Sally? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. This is actually one of my favorite things about it, just because of the nature of education. I feel like you have to collaborate with so many different people. And so the ability to have the student, to have like, to have the general ed teacher, to have, uh, it just enables that collaboration to answer. And so I really do like that. Um, Lauren, I did see your question about outlining the text box. And so I was just gonna ask John, is there a way to outline the text box? So not just the, the bubble speech, but the actual text box? Yeah, there, there's a way that you can add a background here. So there's a lot of different choices here uh, in, inside of the, uh, inside of here. So you can choose right here to add a background color. So if you wanted to add, say, like a, uh, a yellow background, or if you wanted to add a, um, a blue background, you know, some people want to do that. And then you can change the text color to be lighter on a blue background. So maybe you do something like this, maybe uh, maybe white on blue, like that. So that way you can add, you can choose whatever background you, you want uh, behind the text box. All right, um, so now let's go to page four. Um, this one made me smile so much. So what I love about the book, No David, is that the actual author's name is David. So there definitely is something about writing our own stories that's very empowering. Uh, I was working with a student once and they spilled on the floor and they were so upset. And apparently, however it happened, mom was really upset. And days later, the student was stilling. This was still a weighing event for them. So at the time I used a pen and paper, we just retold the story of spilling on the floor, how it happened, what happened, and moved on. But I was thinking that this would be a great way to collaborate with a student and you could actually collaborate with a whole class, right? Where you have your class, each student would have a single page, each student after reading No David, you could write with the students a time when they got in trouble, how they felt and what happened. And so I think that this is a good way, not just to collaborate with individual students, but also a way to collaborate in more of a whole group setting. Right, so, so in this case here, you can see that this current setting is, is in a bathroom, but you, know, you might wanna change it to something different. So, uh, so click on scenes. And in the same way that we did with props, where you could search for props, you can also search for different scenes as well. So you may wanna choose for different scenes for a home, for example. And then maybe you want to choose, you know, this uh, this scene here for for the bedroom. And then you can then click on on the left hand side. You can click on this bedroom scene, and then it changes immediately from the bathroom to to the bedroom there. And then if you didn't want any scene at all for for whatever reason, you could always click, you know, no scene. Um, but this way, you can choose from a wide variety of scenes uh, based upon the, your context. So now let's move on to page six. So my, my master's is in teaching English as a second language. And I hope from my background and from our conversation that you've gotten to know a little bit of my, about my passion for personalizing content for students. But in Navajo, how you would yell at a child is you would actually yell doda. And that's how you would like really tell a child to stop doing that. 
And so I would love to work with a student to rewrite No David, but to use cultural things that they can relate to. This would also be a really good opportunity to talk about like social language and hypotheticals. So if like I was working with a student, I could be like, no, Lucas, that's for dinner. And then I could insert a speech bubble and be like, you know what? What would happen if Lucas told his mom that, you know, like if he told like a negative social response. And so then like, we could talk about that. And then actually the student could continue to write the story, right? Like they could be like, oh, and then Lucas's mom would be like, put that burrito down right now, right? And then Lucas yells at his mom like, no, I bought the burrito. Like we could actually rewrite, we could send a whole session writing if like Lucas had a negative social response. The next week we could meet back up and we could be like, what if Lucas was like, oh, mom, I didn't know it was for dinner. And Lucas put it away, right? And then we could rewrite the whole story if Lucas just put the burrito away and then we could rewrite how he like waited 20 minutes and then he went and sat and had dinner with his family. And then the third week, we could read both stories and compare and contrast and talk about how language changed the story. And so what I really like about this is this collaboration but also that this is not just a hypothetical. Sometimes I feel like I have conversations with students and by putting it into a book, by putting it into a story, all of a sudden that those abstract things become a little more concrete. And it also makes it so that we can revisit it in sequential sessions, which I think is just at the heart of learning, right? Is repetition. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So, you know, so I think based on what you said, you know, maybe in your, in your back and forth with, with Lucas, in terms of how, what would be the, what would be the best way for him to respond? Maybe he decides to say something like, sorry, mom, my bad, or whatever. Um, but then you could then enter that into the story. And then in the following week, you could then reread that. And then he would have a specific story of like how he would handle responding to his mom if he were, if she were to say certain, certain things to him. So, you know, this is, this is one context, you know, here's, here's a kind of a, a kitchen context here. Um, you can add, one of the nice things about story jumper is you can also add photos as well. So in the same way as we did with props and scenes, you can also search for photos. So let's say we wanted to search for uh, a more photorealistic uh, photo of a kitchen. And then maybe you choose this picture of a kitchen here. And then we'll convert that into a scene. And now the context would, would, would be different. Now you would you see, you see him in a different scenario. Um, so it's still in the kitchen, but in a different type of kitchen here. And there we go. Let me just shrink that a little bit. And then the other option, as, as, as I described before, is you may want to um, you may want to add your own photos. So there's an option here where if the student wanted to uh, wanted to draw their own pictures, their own drawings, and um, they can certainly do that. You can scan it, take a picture of that, and then upload it. And then if they want to then design their own characters or have other use other props or other scenes in uh, from Story Jumper, they can add that as well. And so the last thing that we can add here is your voice. So you can imagine that after, you know, Joy had done his session, her session with Lucas, um, maybe he could then uh, add his own voice to this page. So he could say something like this. He clicks on a uh, voice, clicks on record. No, Lucas, do da. That is for dinner. Sorry, mom, my bad. And then you can then play that back. No, Lucas, do da. That is for dinner. Sorry, mom, my bad. And then if you want to add some, some background music, um, this is where you can add it. You can click on plus here and you can choose different types of background music or, or guitar. Let's just. Let's go with a guitar or drums. 
and then he can then play it back again. No, Lucas. Duda. That is for dinner. Sorry, mom. My bad. And then you can also add sound effects as well if you wanted to as well. And then we kind of combine it all together because there's different tracks here. There's a voice track, there's a music background track, and there's also a sound effects track as well. You can save that. All right. Um, and then what we can do here is uh, once we're sort of done working on the book, you can click save and exit. Or once you're done working on it for the day, click save and exit. And you can actually then read through the book and then you can see all the changes uh, that have been made. You can see that the book has been changed from no David to no Sally on this page. You can see that there's a different background here. And then you can also see that this, this text box has been added, the scene's been changed, and then you can also listen to the narration as well. And that could be the end of you know, that session. And then whenever you're ready to go back and make more changes, you just click edit and you can make more changes to the book. And then whenever you're ready to share it with other people, other teachers, parents, other members of the team, you can click on share. And then here's where you can then share with family and friends. You can take this, you can click on copy share link. And then you can then, then copy that into a message to various people. And then you can also, when you want to publish this book, you just click on the buy button. And there's a number of different choices of, of different uh, ways you can publish the book. You can either publish it as a PDF ebook download. You can publish it as a video book where we actually generate a video, which is a 3D animation of your book actually turning, um, which is in sync with your narration. And so that's a great way to sort of take that video. You can um, you know, share with other people, upload it to YouTube. And then of course you can publish this book as a paperback book and also as a hardcover book as well. And the last couple options are, um, you can also publish it as an audio book if you've narrated it. And you can also uh, give gift cards to other people as well. So with that, I think we are ready to go into questions. I saw a couple of really good questions in the chat. And John, I think that you're the, the one who can answer these ones the very best. So one of them is, can you edit other people's books? So once somebody has published a book, could I go, like if like Erin's book, for example, could I go in and copy her book and then I could edit it without interfering with her published copy? So yeah, the way that, that uh, you would want to do that is uh, you would talk to the original author and there's an option. Let me go back to go back to, um, let me go back to the book here. So if you go back to uh, the book, No David, you would need to go back to the, uh, the original author. They click share and there's an option here. Um, yeah, what, so basically what you would do, you would ask them to basically turn it on so that th this is actually a, a book which is, which is part of a class. But um, what you would do is you would go back and you would ask them to make that book a template book. And then they could then make it a template. Once it's a template, then they have then enabled you to make a copy of that book. And then once you have a copy of the book, then you can make the changes that you want. Um, and it would not interfere with the original. Um, Sharon, did that answer your question right there? Just go ahead and put yes in the chat. I thought that that was a pretty good explanation. So if it's a template book, then it can get edited. And if not, and you talk to the author and you get it to be a template book. Yeah, and actually on the idea of the template book, uh, that's really valuable where if you have a kind of a core template story that you wanna use with say, you know, five different students, you can choose to make that a template book. Um, and then if they're part of your story jumper class, then when you share that template book into that class, when they log in, they'll see the book, they can click on that and they can make a, they can make a copy of that and then they can customize the story that you wrote in your template book and they can customize it for themselves. That's easy. I feel like I repeat the same lesson every year. So if I can have a couple of templates that I can just refer to. Right. Yeah. Right. 
I had one more question that I saw in there and that was adding a video to the book page. So is there any way to add a video into the book? So currently um, there, there's not a way to do that. Um, uh, where we're looking at uh, different ways to, to, make, to enable that in the future, but currently th there's not. I get that. I feel like the future is a good drum roll. So no worries. And any other questions, add them in the chat. We have just about one or two more minutes to answer them. So I feel like I know I learned a lot in all honesty. Definitely. All right, I am not seeing anything coming in the chat. Uh, and we are like right up at time. I have learned so much with this collaboration with Story Jumper. I'm so grateful to be working with Eluma Online Therapy in the partnership and community because I love finding these gems of really good resources. And I also like connecting with people like John, in all honesty. I don't know if you guys realize how much I just admire John working because he really learned all of the language that he was using to like modify this for clinicians by, by asking a lot of questions to, to us. And I just think that that's really admirable. It makes me enjoy collaborating with Story Jump for all the more. Erin, I want to give a shout out to her because there's nothing like needed in the professional reference to answer the questions. So I truly appreciate that. And I want to say thanks to everyone in the audience. I loved reading through all of your different comments in the chat. I hope that you're able to take some of the information that we shared today and start to apply it to maximize uh, your, your work and, and what you're doing with your students. So thank you again, everybody. And and we look forward to, if you have any additional questions too, um, we will be, this will be a recorded session and we'll be sharing it out as well. And so thank you so much. Bye everyone. Bye.